pass the back of the house if we have time to do the other thing. Oh, yeah. We do have time to do the other thing? Oh, you guys. <laughs> we are going to do the other thing. <laughs> no, I said the other thing. I don't know where you were at 4 o'clock this morning. It was probably a sex party, because I wasn't there. I was asleep. Um, I am easily amused. It is the absolute best way to live your life. Um, I know, having been that insufferable, overly serious 21-year-old philosopher douchebag, that um, sort of like that hipster thing of like not enjoying things legitimately, but only enjoying them like kind of ironically at the expense of another person, sucks. Don't do it. Don't be a dick. Really love things. Allow yourself to be easily amused by things. So, a few months ago, uh, I was walking around being easily amused by stuff like I am, and my brain was like, hey, Will, what's up, brain? You got something to tell me? In fact, I do. Um, wouldn't it be funny if Robocop was a really bad sitcom in the 80s? <laughs> Go on, brain. Well, like, he would always be fucking up. And then all the other cops would go, RoboCop! <laughs> like with their hands on their hips. And then RoboCop would murder them all. <laughs> and it happened every week like that. Half hour, four camera show. Everything resets right away at the beginning of next week. Nobody's dead. It's the same story over and over and over again. It's different strokes without that creepy Gordon Jump episode. So, um, I took this idea to Twitter, and all these people on Twitter were like, dude, yeah, here's some other ideas. And then my brain was like, you know what has to happen now, right? So I sat down and I wrote out the entire first season of Robocop, if it were a dialogue and sitcom. Now, I have with me um, part of one of the episodes. And uh, something that actors and writers will, will often do is, is we will get together and we will get together with some of our friends and we will ask them if they'll do a staged reading for us. And the reason we do this is because we, like, as a writer you're going to get something up on its feet and just hear other people do the characters so that you, know, you, just, you get a little bit of perspective on them. And you do that so that you can make it better. Um, this doesn't have to be better because it's perfect. <laughs> Uh, but I, I think that you will enjoy hearing it performed for you uh, uh, in any event. So I'd like to uh, introduce uh, today's cast for Robocop! Exclamation point. Uh, uh, playing the role of uh, the audience, because Robocop is still in front of a live studio audience, is uh, our good friend Mr. Paul Saboran. Also, feel free to take the curtain off. Um, uh, there's a lot of description that happens in here, and that description will be performed by our good friend, uh, Mr. Storm DiCostanto. I will be playing the part of Robocop. And the part of the most popular character on the show, the one who everyone loves more even than the title character, the grizzled old sergeant who is always very close to retirement, is our host, Jonathan Colton. Hello, gentlemen. Good evening. Hello. Hello. I really appreciate you coming here to this uh, theater space I rented in the valley. <laughs> it's a lovely black box. You said there was going to be some food, but there's not any food. Well, uh, that's all right. I'm ordering some pizza. And uh, I understand there's some casting folks in the audience, so I make good on that promise as well. Um, so uh, this will be Robocop, everybody. Robocop. And uh, Storm, go, go right ahead. Interior. Police headquarters, day. Robocop comes toward the camera, doing that weird marching walk thing. <laughs> he stops in front of the vending machine and precisely turns to face it. <laughs> Flash to Robocop point of view. Through Robocop's heads-up display, we see the nutritional information of the various items in the machine as he scans them. A can of soda has a mouse in it. A chocolate bar has traces of cocaine. A bag of chips is actually a bag of fingernails. 
All that skips by so fast, though, the audience doesn't really notice it, consciously. A crosshairs appears on the heads-up display and selects a bag of oiled, flavored microchips. They're actually chips, with a cartoony, smiling Robocop drawing on the front. He's giving a thumbs. Oh, that should actually be thumbs up. There's a typo in this script. Sorry. Maybe now now he is giving a thumbs. Or yes. Could, could also maybe meant some thumbs. Yeah. Some like, thumbs. Here you go. You Robocop know. has many thumbs. Yeah. This is also actually the very first uh, a sponsorship tie-in that happens on Robocop the series. Oh, that's uh, handy. Yeah. These are uh, Wise makes the uh, oil flavored microchips. <laughs> <laughs> they don't exist on the West Coast. Back to scene. Robocop puts a crumpled dollar into the machine, which spits it out. He does this three or four times. Dead or alive, these chips are coming with me. <laughs> Accept my money. You have 10 seconds to comply. He tries to put the money into the machine. The machine spits it back out. I have ordered you to accept my money. You have seven seconds to comply. He tries to put the money in the machine. The machine spits it back. Out. It falls to the floor. You have attempted to assault a police officer with his own money. You are under arrest. An older, grizzled sergeant comes out of his office down the hall. Robocop, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> That's actually why there's a lot of problems on the set between Robocop and the sergeant in the seventh season, because Robocop has figured out that the audience likes the sergeant more. <laughs> And he found out by reading the trade papers that the sergeant got more in the contract renegotiation in the fifth season than Robocop gets. You gotta pay for talent. <laughs> <laughs> he also has had a Robocop What the Hell Are You Doing t-shirts made, but he didn't get them licensed properly first. <laughs> Robocop, what the hell are you doing? Making an arrest, sir. The sergeant rolls his eyes and shakes his head. Uh, Robocop, would you mind telling me how you're going to arrest a vending machine? <laughs> By the book. <laughs> Robocop, you are crazy. Let me help you. The sergeant picks up the dollar bill off the floor. Robocop pulls his gun in a flash. He points it at the sergeant. You are tampering with evidence. You are under arrest. You can't arrest me, Robocop. I'm your boss. You are under arrest. Oh, Robocop, I ain't got time for this. I retire in two days. It's <laughs> another <laughs> catchphrase. He actually does an entire tie-in with a fast food chain about retiring in two days. Right. <laughs> arrest. Uh, arrest. Uh, arrest. Arrest. Damn it, now you're stuck in the loop. I better reset you. The sergeant makes a move towards Robocop. The sergeant puts his hand on Robocop's shoulder. Robocop snaps out of it. Assault on an officer. Use of deadly force is authorized. Robocop shoots about a thousand bullets into the sergeant. Throwing him across the hallway. Where he hits the wall and slides to the floor, leaving streaks of blood behind. I had two days to retirement. The sergeant dies. Thank you for your cooperation. I am not arresting you anymore. Dozens of officers rush into the hallway, stopping short of the grisly scene. They look at Robocop, incredulous. Robocop turns back to the vending machine. Your move, dirtbag. <laughs> Suddenly, the bag of chips drops from the vending machine for some reason, startling Robocop. He whirls towards it and destroys it in a hail of epic gunfire. <laughs> Robocop! 
Did I do that? Studios. No animals were harmed in the filming of Robocop.